Hi friends, welcome to this class on metals and non-metals. I'm going to make the concepts really easy for you. So I'm sure after watching this video, you'll find metals and non-metals really easy. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start. And before we start, I want to uh, share an exciting news with you guys that we've launched the uh, Maths CBSE Class 10 course, guys. So here you can see we just launched this course for Maths CBSE Class 10. So guys, do check it out. I'll put the links below. And we all also have courses for Physics and Chemistry for Class 10. And there are courses for Class 9 also. And Maths for Class 9 is coming up next week. So guys, uh, please do check out our courses. All right, uh, so guys, are you excited for our class on metals and non-metals? And uh, we are going to dive right into it. And welcome everyone. Great to see a lot of folks here on the live class. So welcome again. And let's go ahead and take a look at our topic. So here's our first question, guys. I've put some pictures here and you need to identify which ones are metals and which ones are non-metals. So let me write down. So what do you guys see in the picture here? In this picture, there's gold. Okay, here you can see some coal. Uh, this is water. And you need to identify which one is a metal or is it a non-metal or what do you think, right? This is sulfur. Here's a picture of wood. And these are iron nails, right guys? So let's go ahead and start one, uh, starting from the first picture, right? So I'm going to number them. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So guys, the first one, gold. What do you guys think? Is it a metal or non-metal? So come on, I want everybody here to try. Excellent, guys, excellent. So a lot of you are saying gold is a metal. So let's go ahead and write that here. So gold is a metal. Now, what do you think about coal? Is it a metal or non-metal? What do you guys think? Very good, very good. So I want everybody here to try. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button right now and do share it out with your friends. So guys, what about number two, coal, right? Okay, very good. So coal, you know, the main content of coal is carbon, right? So here we are talking, so rather than coal, let me write carbon here. So in case some of you are confused. So coal is mainly containing carbon, right? So we are not talking about the dust and stuff there, right? So very good guys. Coal is a, uh, sorry, carbon is a non-metal. Excellent. Guys, what do you think about water? Is it a metal or a non-metal? So this third picture here, guys, what do you think is water? Okay, there are some new students who joined us. So yes, I can introduce myself. My name is Sandeep Manocha and uh, we have this uh, YouTube channel, Manocha Academy, right? And we also have our website, manochaacademy.com where we've got these courses for class nine and 10 right now. And so do check it out and welcome again, everyone. And great to see more folks out here. So what do you think? Water, is it a metal or non-metal? So some of you just joined us. So this is our first uh, question that we are doing. This is just the introductory slide. So to get all of you thinking, is it a metal or non-metal? Okay, a lot of you are saying non-metal, non-metal. Ah, we are going to take a look at this because this one is going to be none of these. It is neither a metal or a non-metal and I'm going to explain you why. Okay, so the water one was a trick question. It is not a non-metal. No, a lot of you are saying non-metal. The answer is none. Okay. So, uh, and I'll tell you why. Let me keep the suspense, okay, guys? And you also think why I'm saying water is a non-metal. Now, guys, what about the fourth picture here, sulfur? So do, uh, do you guys know is sulfur is a metal or a non-metal? Very good. I think Sachin Jha has the right answer here and I'll disclose that soon. Very good. Shresh Kumar is also saying that. Okay, so is Kirit Ghosh. So, guys, uh, let's look at sulfur. Four, what do you think it is? A metal or a non-metal? We're talking about four. Okay, very good guys. Sulfur is a non-metal. So let's write that down. And we'll discuss the properties. This is just to, uh, based on your everyday knowledge, I want you to tell which one do you think are metals and non-metals. You guys see these things, right? Maybe you don't see sulfur every day, but all of the other things you see, right? So I want uh, all of you guys to think. What about wood, guys? Is it a metal or a non-metal? So 
picture number five wood would you classify as a picture or a no, uh, uh, would you classify this picture wood as a metal or a non-metal what do you think okay some of you are saying non-metal right so i have three options now not just metal non-metal none also you can say okay so uh, started with a trick question here right okay very good uh, some of you are saying uh, non-metal but a lot of you are saying none so wood is also falling in that category like water none of these and we'll discuss why okay we are coming to that and why is uh, what is iron guys the sixth picture here okay so can you see the iron nails here in this picture what do you think is iron a metal a non-metal or is it none of them okay all right a lot of you are saying none for wood very good and guys okay excellent guys all of you know right iron you've heard about so iron is definitely a metal so let's write that down okay so let's write this down now let's try to understand why did i say water and wood is none of these so to understand that let's take a look here that matter remember you've studied this in your earlier classes also matter you can classify into pure substances and mixtures right so matter can be divided into pure substance and mixture and the pure substances can be divided into elements and compounds, right? So you can divide pure substances into elements and compounds and mixtures, you know, can be divided into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, right? We can divide these things here, okay? So you, uh, and this is all uh, doing classification on base of chemical properties, right? So based on the chemical properties, not physical properties, there we do solid liquid gas, okay? And we're uh, going to be talking about, so this metals, non-metals, which category do you think it falls into? In these four categories, where do you think metals and non-metals go, uh, are going to fall? Okay. So guys, can you tell me which one do you think it's going to fall in the metals or the non-metals? So all of you try guys. So I want everybody to try. Where do you think it's going to fall? Okay, and I see a lot of folks are out here, but I see less likes. So can everybody hit the like button right now? Okay, so in uh, in this category, where do you think the uh, metals and non-metals are going to fall? Is it going to be under elements, compounds, homogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures? Yeah, it's under pure substances, but in pure substances under elements or compounds. And thanks guys for the likes. Okay, very good. So yeah, I'm going to define them. So you might have read in the um, previous classes also, but we'll be going over it. So don't worry if you don't know the answer. So elements, uh, metals and non-metals fall under elements. So we have metals and non-metals here. Okay, right. So we'll be talking about that and that's why guys we said water and wood is not a metal or a non-metal because remember metals and non-metals are only elements and these you know water is a compound so we can write that here water guys is a compound right and wood is also comp uh, wood is a mixture as we had discussed in the previous live class right. So water is a compound, that's why it's neither a metal nor a non-metal and wood is a mixture. So it is neither a metal or a non-metal because metals and non-metals are under elements. Okay guys, so metals and non-metals and we'll talk about some more categories also. So these are falling under elements, metals and non-metals. Okay, so let's talk about them. So what are elements? Since our Topic today is metals and non-metals and these are types of elements. So element is a substance which cannot be split up into two or more simpler substances by chemical means. Okay, that means not only by physical methods, even if you do a chemical reaction, you cannot separate out a metal into simpler substances. For example, you cannot split gold into simpler substances, right? Gold is just made of gold atoms, right? So can you see? It says it contains only one kind of atoms and same thing for iron, right? So iron contains only iron atoms. You cannot break it down. But you know that if we do a, a chemical reaction with water, water can be broken up uh, by 
doing electrolysis into hydrogen and oxygen, right? And we should balance the equation. So you know water is a compound and wood is a mixture made of many compounds, okay? But guys, please remember this very important thing. When you're studying metals and non-metals, you're only under elements, okay? And speaking of elements, guys, you must have seen this huge uh, thing. What is this called? Have you seen this chart before? So guys, what is this known as? What you see in the screen right now? So guys, what is this called? Can you tell me? Excellent, excellent guys. So a lot of you are writing that, super. So what is this known as? The periodic table. Very good. So you must have seen this picture and this is the periodic table. It is the table of, so why do we have it here? Because it is the periodic table of elements, right? Can you see that? And so how many elements are there? Very good guys. So this is known as the periodic table or what is called the modern periodic table. And you can watch my video on that. There's a video on modern periodic table, which I have. So uh, how many elements are there? Very good. I see Prakriti says 118, right? Gopal says 118. Excellent guys, excellent. So uh, if you look here, the last element here, can you see? So if I move my head, so that one is the 118th element. So we have 118 elements in nature and they're all arranged in this periodic table, okay? And we'll be talking uh, about them. Now, since there are 118 elements, okay? So it's not just like five or 10, right? So this world is made up of, or the universe we can say is made up of 118 elements, right? So we can, uh, it's a good idea to divide the elements, right? So you know, elements can be classified into different groups, as you can see here. So what are the groups, guys? So can you see in the picture here? We are dividing the elements, since we're interested in elements. So as we said, we can divide them into metals, non-metals, metalloids, and noble gases, okay? Right, so you must have heard of this. So metals can be, uh, elements can be divided into metals, non-metals, metalloids, and noble gases. Clear guys? So we can divide them into these four categories. Okay. And today our main focus will be on metals and non-metals. We'll talk a bit about metalloids. We won't discuss much about noble gases or what are known as inert gases today. Okay. So all these 118 elements can be divided into these four categories. Okay. So let's say you colored the periodic table, right? So this was our uh, periodic table without any colors. So let's say we applied these colors, right? So for metals, non-metals, metalloids, and noble gases, our periodic table would look something like this, okay? So you might have seen these colorful pictures in your book or on the internet, right? So guys, um, these uh, guys in pink, what are they? What do you think the guys in pink are? So we, uh, what, do you, what do we have in pink here? We have things like magnesium. Can you see magnesium there? Iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, okay, potassium, sodium. So guys, what are the... Uh, elements which are colored in pink, what are they here? Metals, non-metals, metalloids or noble gases, what do you think? Okay, very good guys. So in our periodic table, the pink ones are metals, right? Excellent. So the pink guys here, all these pink boxes that you see, these are all metals, okay? Right, so we have, we've colored the periodic table. Now what about the green boxes that you see here, right? So these greenish boxes, Right? Can you see the green boxes here? What do you think they are? Uh, so what were our categories? Metals, non-metals, metalloids, and noble gases. So the green ones are what? What do you think? Okay, very good guys, very good. So the green ones are non-metals. Okay, because can you see carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, these guys in there, right? So these are non-metals, super. Okay, and what are these orange guys? So do you see uh, boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, all these guys? So do you know what are the orange guys? It's okay if you don't know, you can try, right? And we'll be learning about these things. So these are called metalloids. And they have properties of both metals and non-metals, right? Very good. So Shreya says, right? Uh, Gamer Strain says metalloids, right? So good. So these guys are the metalloids, the orange ones. And what about the last yellow ones, right? So do you see these guys in yellow here? Can you guys see that? So these boxes right here, so I've drawn that long arrow, right? 
or let me draw it clearly again okay so all these yellow guys out here so what are they basically these yellow guys okay they are the noble gases very good noble gases or inert gases noble gases or inert gases and why are they called noble or inert gases because they are very unreactive okay they are very low reactivity they are so noble they don't want to react with anybody okay so these are the four categories and please remember what we are talking about elements only elements today okay metals non-metals metalloids inert gas this is the most important thing i want you to remember in this class today that we are only focused on elements not compounds not mixtures okay there are 118 elements and they are divided into these uh, metal uh, metals the pink ones that you see here the green ones which are non-metals the orange ones which are metalloids and the yellow ones which are noble or inert gases clear guys okay so is this crystal clear remember we are only doing elements and if some of you like this chart you can remember it this way right so our focus is mainly on elements and mainly we are focused on the metals and non-metals under elements which is under pure substance okay right so very good so let's go ahead and let me ask you a question right so you've seen this periodic table also so most of the elements are what what do you think metals non-metals metalloids or noble gas so guys what do you think is the answer here so what do you think is the answer so most of the elements are they metals non-metals metalloids or noble gases what do you guys think okay some of you are saying a some of you are saying b so come on i want everybody to try it doesn't matter guys if it's right or wrong please go ahead and try and great to see all of you interacting and participating right so that's really amazing to see because really you should clear your science concepts then you'll find it really interesting and easy okay excellent guys so i see most of you have the right answer super it's metals okay fantastic because as you see you remember it with this picture what is the maximum color you see it's pink color the metals right can you see the maximum color in the periodic table is this pink portion okay so most of the elements remember are metals i think they are around 90 metals okay but you can check that i also don't remember so most of the 118 elements are metals okay and there are few non-metals and less uh, metalloids and noble gases okay excellent guys all right so let's talk about the guy who's in majority right the metals so what is how do we define a metal or what is a metal a metal is an element that is malleable ductile and it conducts electricity okay so what is a metal metal is an element that is malleable ductile and conducts electricity okay so we are going to discuss these terms right because some of you might have heard these terms the first time i think everybody knows what is conducts electricity right so you know the wires they are made of metals right so i'm sure you've seen the wires in your house right or the wires in the leading to the computer right uh, the electrical wires they are made of metals right and metals are of course they are good conductors of electricity right and metals are also malleable and ductile now we are going to understand what these terms mean so don't worry if you don't know them i'm going to explain it to you okay so here is an uh, we're going to talk about these and just to give you the introduction so this is malleability means uh, thing which can be beaten into sheets like you see these uh, aluminium uh, foils here right these containers made of aluminium and ductile means it can be drawn into wires right and this example was a good conductor of electricity right the wires okay so don't worry we are going to go into these terms excellent now you know that uh, from your experience you know that all the metals are solids at room temperature okay so can you give me an exception and i've given you a clue in the picture so you know that most of the metals right that you've experienced iron copper gold silver right these are all solids but can you tell me which metal is not a solid at room temperature okay very good i see uh, giovanni has the right answer arya excellent guys gopal uh, 
Kana, very good. Super guys, very good. You guys rock. So the exception to this list is all metals are solids at room temperature. Okay, not, of course, you can heat them and melt them. We are not talking about that. At room temperature, most of the metals are all are solids except for mercury is the answer. So very important question. A lot of times it's asked. Excellent guys. Suresh, Albert Einstein, Dinesh Kumar, correct answer. The answer is mercury. And here you can see, I've shown the thermometer here, right? You know the, uh, of course, uh, we have these digital thermometers where you can't see it, but if you have these kind of typical thermometers where you can see the mercury, you know that the liquid in these thermometers is usually mercury. And it is a liquid at room temperature. That's why it can move uh, in the thermometer, right? Okay, so guys, will you remember that for me with the help of this thermometer that I showed you here? So this is a picture of a thermometer. Okay, great guys. Now let's go ahead. Malleability, right? So we are talking about metals, right? So metals are elements that is uh, can be malleable, ductile, and it conducts electricity. So let's first talk about the term malleability, okay? So these are properties of metals which allows them to be hammered into thin sheets. So this is the meaning of malleability, right? So what is malleability? It allows the metals to be hammered into thin sheets without breaking them, okay? Right? So let's discuss that. What does this mean? So if you take metals, right, you can uh, beat them up into thin sheets, right guys? So what do we mean by that here? Let's discuss. So if you take a look at the pictures here, so can you see the pictures here guys? So if you take a look at these pictures, uh, can you see that uh, these, uh, this is an example of aluminium, right? These aluminium, you've heard of aluminium foils, right? So aluminium foils, uh, you've, you, uh, people use them in the kitchen, right? Or you've seen these food containers, right? When you uh, take food uh, in these containers, they are made of aluminium. And what is the property of aluminium? It can be beaten, hammered into thin sheets without breaking it, okay? So the sheet won't tear. It will just be, uh, it'll be a, a thin sheet when you beat the metal. And that is the meaning of malleability. And what is the example? Another example shown here, this is gold. Okay. So the gold foil that you see here, you can beat gold and it's malleable, right? You can make it into a thin sheet. And what do you see in the picture here, right? So guys, can you see this picture? So this is actually, you must have seen in the sweets, right? Especially in the Indian sweets, we put silver foil, right? So silver foil is put to decorate the sweets right and because silver is also highly malleable it can be hammered into very very thin sheets right yes somebody is saying uh Tarek is saying very expensive right so gold and silver foils of course they're expensive metals but aluminium foil is usually what we use in the kitchen or to wrap food or to make food containers okay so these are the examples of malleability you can remember it with these examples properties of metals which can be hammered into thin sheets without breaking them. Okay, great guys. All right. I think some of you are having a buffering problem. Actually, I hope it will go away because uh, the net on my side is fine. Some of you are writing that. So just be patient. It sometimes takes a minute or two in the server, right? Uh, but hopefully you'll find it fine. So let's go to the next question, which is the most malleable metal. So I'll give you some options as we were discussing. These containers are made of aluminium. So is it aluminium or is it gold or is it silver as shown in this uh, sweets? So can you tell me which is the most malleable metal? Aluminium, silver or gold? Come on guys, try. Okay, very good. I see Kavya has the right answer. Uh, Jay Reddy, excellent guys. Satyam Kumar, super. Okay, so very good guys. The correct answer is gold. Gold is the most malleable metal, okay? And that means the gold can be beaten up into very, very thin sheets. Very, very thin sheets, right? Okay, so it's uh, used for science experiment also because it is one of the most malleable metal. You can make very thin sheets. Aluminium and silver are also malleable, but which is the most malleable? The correct answer is, so please remember that the answer is 
gold okay is the most malleable metal excellent guys clear very good so will you remember that now another question for you what is the opposite of malleability right so as you can see in the pictures here right so here i had shown you malleability okay and here are some pictures of the opposite of it right so you know that when you hit glass right or when you hit coal right it doesn't so you cannot uh, beat it down into thin sheets malleability means you can break it uh, beat it down into thin sheets so yes uh, somebody saying opposite of malleability means non malleable very good but what is the term for that okay so some of you are writing ductile that's not the correct answer very good i see some of you have written the right answer the correct answer here is opposite of malleability is called brittleness okay so brittleness means you know that it will break into small pieces on hammering so it breaks into small pieces when we hammer it okay so very good guys yes correct excellent so brittleness right so opposite of malleability will you remember that is brittleness and here the example is you know that when you hit coal right coal is carbon so coal is a brittle thing right glass actually is not a element right but i showed the picture of the glass because glass you know is not a metal or a non metal it's a uh, it's a compound right it's made of many things or a mixture so glass is not a uh, thing but it's a great example of brittleness because we know that the glass material is highly brittle the moment you hit it with a hammer it shatters it shatters or breaks into small pieces okay so the answer is not ductility it's malleability we are coming to ductility next okay so let's really understand these terms what is the meaning of ductile or ductility property of metals which allows it to be stretched into thin wires without breaking it right so if you see in the pictures here you must have seen right so can you see the copper wires here they are really really thin wires okay so you can take a metal and you can stretch it right you keep on stretching it stretching it and it keeps becoming thin okay and it doesn't tear right so it can be really stretched into very thin wires like the copper wires or like the aluminium wires that you see in the picture here right right so aluminium copper they are great examples of being ductile okay guys so thanks uh, great to see people are enjoying the session and please participate and write i'll keep asking questions and guys if you haven't hit the like button please hit the like button right now i'd love to see more likes and do share out our videos with your friends and so that we can have more people joining our live sessions and also check out our website manochacademy.com okay some few join late no worries uh, you can watch the initial part later so please be with us here because we are discussing some really interesting things on metals and non metals okay so let's continue so ductility means a property of metals which can be stretched into thin wires okay so here we can summarize that what we learned about metals guys remember metals are malleable we talked about that so it can be beaten into thin sheets like this aluminium foils here they are ductile like you see in the picture here the copper wires and you know their metals are used to make wires as shown in the picture here because metals are good conductors of electricity so these are very very important terms and very important properties of metals okay great now let's move on to some uh, things about non metals okay so non metal is just the opposite right it's an element again remember guys we are talking about elements it is an element that is neither malleable so it is not malleable it cannot be beaten into thin sheets it is not ductile nor ductile it cannot be drawn into thin wires and usually it does not conduct electricity so it does not conduct electricity okay so these are the uh, this is how we classify or define a non metal but again guys remember chemistry there's always interesting exceptions you know it's interesting and irritating because usually in chemistry you'll always have some exception or the other okay uh, and so non metals uh, these are the general properties there can be some exceptions which we'll discuss so usually it is neither malleable nor ductile nor does it conduct electricity and guys can you tell me what are the examples of the non metals in the picture here so guys can you identify these non metals come on i want everybody to try here okay very good so suresh says 
first picture is coal excellent right so coal or let's write it carbon right because we know that coal is a mixture of uh, different things right so mainly we are talking about elements so this is carbon okay and sulfur excellent okay so the yellow one that you see here is sulfur and these you know are both non-metals okay because they show these properties you uh, you know that if you uh, beat them they are brittle right they will break into pieces they're not malleable you cannot make wires out of carbon and sulfur right okay and usually they don't conduct electricity okay so very good with the help of these you can remember that and metals we said they are usually solids except for mercury but a non-metal can be a solid liquid or a gas at room temperature and let's discuss some examples okay so guys let's discuss some examples so what do you think uh, let's talk about solids so what are some solid non-metals so i want everybody to try here here we are discussing about solid non-metals so can you tell me some non-metals which are solids so come on guys so all of you try okay so please remember solids can be uh, uh, the sorry non-metals can be solid liquids or gases at room temperature and i want all of you to try here come on so what are the very good so as we saw in the picture right so we saw in this picture carbon and sulfur excellent guys so carbon sulfur they are examples of solids right uh, do you know that phosphorus right phosphorus is a non-metal and phosphorus is also in solid form okay so you can have some uh, solid non-metals uh, can anybody tell me a liquid non-metal so come on guys i want you to try a liquid non-metal guys so who's going to tell me a liquid non-metal okay i think there's uh, one that i know okay okay very good i see uh, srinivas has the right answer abhinay yadav excellent guys excellent kavya very good bromine is the answer okay so please remember that it's a special guy bromine is usually a liquid at room temperature we've heard of bromine gas also but at room temperature usually it's a liquid no guys it's not mercury mercury is a metal here we are talking about liquid non-metal i know it's confusing so be clear about it bromine is the correct answer excellent guys excellent and what about gas can you tell me some non-metal gas this is pretty easy i think all of you know very good bromine is the right answer arun says oxygen very good so oxygen right anybody else okay gopal says hydrogen excellent hydrogen is a non-metal please remember that sometimes people confuse it because it's in group one in the periodic table with the metals hydrogen is a non-metal please remember that okay chlorine very good uh, i see chlorine in there right excellent helium no guys helium is we are not uh, saying it's a non-metal helium we put in a separate category now of course uh, in different books you might find different classification but helium is an inert or noble gas fluorine okay very good fluorine okay somebody saying carbon dioxide but carbon dioxide guys is a compound okay so good point nitrogen nitrogen very good okay but carbon dioxide please remember co2 carbon dioxide will be none of these uh, it is not a non-metal why it sounds like it's a gas so it's a non-metal uh, right because gases are non-metals but carbon dioxide is a compound okay so guys please uh, remember good question right so carbon dioxide will be a compound argon guys it's a noble gas inert gas okay so that's not a uh, non-metal according to our definition but sometimes inert gas is also taken so go by your book okay but here we are taking uh, elements we divided remember into metal non-metal uh, metalloids and noble or inert gases okay uh, so let's compare the properties of metals and non-metals now you guys have a basic idea of what is a metal what is a non-metal and remember i told there are elements okay and we discussed these points remember guys that uh, metals are malleable right but non-metals are non-malleable or they are basically brittles right they can be they cannot be beaten into thin sheets metals are ductile they can be drawn into thin wires like copper wire right aluminium wire you have seen okay but non-metals are non-ductile which means you cannot make wires out of non-metals you cannot stretch them into wires okay and metals are usually good conductors of heat and electricity right so we know that usually metals are right from our experience we know metals right like uh, copper right 
and um, uh, this thing iron right usually most of the metals we know uh, silver right they are good conductors of heat and electricity gold okay but can somebody tell me some exceptions so what is an exception of a metal which is a bad conductor of heat so which metal is a bad conductor of heat so does anybody know guys bad conductor of heat so which metal so as I told you there are some exceptions right because everything doesn't fall into that okay uh, very good uh, Ani Anirudh has the right answer excellent guys Somme also so here uh, of course there are many examples but the most famous ones are lead okay lead you know the symbol PB and mercury okay mercury is Hg right so these are uh, poor conductors of heat okay so they are bad conductors right so yes uh, tungsten bismuth yeah there are many examples very good you can learn more but the most famous ones are lead and mercury are bad conductors of heat excellent guys and uh, usually non-metals as we expect it to be the opposite of metals they are bad conductors of uh, heat and electricity because metals were good conductors so can you tell some exceptions so can you tell me some non-metal which is a good conductor of heat so let's talk about a non-metal which is an exception right so an exception to this rule so non-metal which is a good conductor of heat so good conductor of heat and similarly can you tell me a non-metal which is a good conductor of electricity so come on i want all of you to try wow i'm seeing some good answers so good conductor sorry i wrote good electricity so a good conductor of electricity Come on, I want everybody to try here, guys. Excellent, excellent. So good conductor of heat. Uh, there are some exceptions. Diamond is one of them, right? And diamond, you know, is nothing but uh, diamond. Let me spell that correctly. Diamond, you know, is nothing but a form or an allotrope of carbon, right? And carbon is a non-metal. And similarly, a good conductor of electricity. I think you guys can't read, so let me write that on top here. So non-metal, which is a good conductor of electricity, of electricity very good super guys you guys rock the answer is graphite right oh again we can't see that right I'm, it's my head covering that so let's write it on top graphite which is also a form of carbon very good okay excellent guys so please remember that good conductor of heat diamond diamond is a good conductor even though it's a non-metal and graphite you know that graphite is electrodes are made of graphite we use it for electrolysis Graphite is a good conductor of electricity, even though it's a form of carbon, pure carbon. Carbon is an element, right? It's an allotrope, a form of carbon. Okay, very good. Super, guys. Now let's talk about some more differences because these differences between metals and non-metals are super important. And I'm going to make it super easy for you. So metals, guys, you know, they are lustrous or shiny, right? So the word lustrous means they're shiny. Like, for example, uh, you can see in this picture, can you see? The gold is shining, right? Right? You've heard that phrase, all that glitters is not gold, right? Or all that glitters here is gold, okay? So gold is shiny, silver is shiny, right? Copper, you've seen, they're shiny. Very good, right? Uh, so this thing, and non-metals are usually dull. They are not lustrous, okay? So non-metals, you guys know, they're usually dull. They're not shiny, so not shiny, right? Uh, as you can see in the picture here, right? So carbon doesn't seem to be shiny at all. Can you see the picture here? So carbon, right? So they don't have this metallic kind of shine, metallic luster. Can you tell me an exception? So, come on, guys. So can you tell me an exception to this rule? So exception means can you give me a non-metal which is shiny? So come on, try. Some of you are saying mercury. No, I'm asking for a non-metal which is shiny. Mercury is a metal. Okay, very good. I see India Talent has the right answer. Uh, Jay Reddy, very good. Okay, it's scrolling. A lot of you are writing the correct answer. Excellent, guys. Great to see. Uh, Nair has the right answer, I think. Very good. Uh, iodine. Iodine is the correct answer here. So iodine, which is the symbol I, right? You know, uh, iodine is a non-metal and it is shiny. So it is a shiny non-metal. That is why it is an exception to this rule. And guys, these exceptions are very important because that is what is asked in your test, right? So they'll say, name a non-metal which is 
not dull or which is lustrous and the correct answer is iodine excellent guys that's right Ansh. very good super now let's take a look at the uh, next set of differences so metals we know they're generally hard right you know that iron copper from your experience right these are hard and non-metals are generally softer okay so again let's talk about exceptions so here you can see in this picture we have these iron nails right so you know iron or you've seen the the planes are made of aluminium right of course they use alloys which are mixture of metals but generally even pure metals are generally hard okay but what are some exceptions here so guys can you tell me some uh, metals which are soft so i'm looking for soft metal guys come on soft metals so who can tell me metals which are soft okay mercury is an exception because it is a liquid yeah very good okay so muthu krishna i see right very good sodium potassium manu excellent guys so the answer is sodium and potassium very famous uh, these are known as soft metals sodium and potassium and usually guys these em guys are metals like calcium sodium potassium magnesium right all these guys you know they're usually the metal guys everything that doesn't uh, it's because copper iron doesn't end with em but uh, the ium em right but sodium potassium these guys are all metals na and k right and they are called soft metals excellent because they're so soft they can even be cut with a knife okay so these metals can easily be cut with a knife okay and non-metals as we said like this sulfur or you know co uh, carbon right they are usually soft graphite is soft but can you give some exception of a non-metal which is hard so who can tell me this is a pretty simple question i want all of you to try can you tell me an exception to the non-metal rule so we looked at the exception of metals now can you tell me that okay guys great to see all of you participating it's amazing to see that okay very good hurry i think has the right answer excellent excellent all in one super all right uh, very good guys diamond excellent and guys you know that diamond is the hardest known natural substance right so it's really an exception because just imagine the hardest known natural substance okay so hardest known natural substance diamond which is nothing but a form of carbon right is so the hardest known natural substance is a non-metal it's a diamond so it's a really super exception here because normally we would have expected it to be a metal but the hardest known natural substance is not a metal it's a diamond okay excellent guys so please remember and diamond is an allotrope of carbon so it is just pure carbon all right very good so can you see the carbon takes different forms in coal it's soft and it's not hard but diamond it's very hard graphite is soft okay pencils you know are made of graphite which is soft okay so carbon is very interesting element with different forms and you'll be studying that in class 10 okay excellent guys now let's also talk about other comparison point between metals and non-metals metals are usually strong whereas non-metals are usually not strong and we use this term high tensile strength you might see these terms in your science book so what is the meaning of high tensile strength the ability to stand okay so the ability to withstand so it can withstand stress or strain right so it can withstand stress and strain right so what does that mean right so when you pull so, so let's say you have a wire right made of metal or a rod made of metal it can tolerate a lot of weight that's why you can see guys in this picture what do i have here the bridges right we know the bridges here can you see that so the bridges are definitely made of metals okay of course we use alloys right but if it's even made of pure iron it can withstand a lot of strain of course iron has the problem of rusting that's a different thing but they can they have high tensile strength they are usually strong whereas non-metals are usually weak okay they are not strong and here again there are some exceptions because we know diamond is very strong right so an exception to this rule will be diamond okay and the exception on the metal side is so except uh, so they are usually strong except guys do you know what is the exception here sodium and potassium so sodium and potassium we told they are soft metals right so they don't have a uh, high tensile strength excellent guys 
So I hope the concepts are being clear and guys, please hit the like button and do share it out with your friends and please put in your feedback also in the comments, right? It's great to see that. Let's continue our class on metals and non-metals. I hope all of, I'm really enjoying it. I hope you're also enjoying the session. So come on, let's take a look at more differences. So as we discussed, metals are usually solids at room temperature, of course, except mercury. Okay, so mercury is a liquid and non-metals can be solid, liquid or gas. Remember, we had discussed those, right, where bromine was a gas, uh, sorry, bromine was a liquid, oxygen, hydrogen, they are gases, right? And you can have some solid non-metals also like carbon, sulfur, phosphorus, okay? So non-metals can take different states here. Very good. And you know that metals, they usually have a high melting or boiling point, right? So for a metal to melt, to change from solid to liquid, it needs a lot of high temperature. Or imagine boiling the metal, right? So gaseous metal, you need even further temperature, right? So you can do it at very, very high temperature. But usually the non-metals, they have low melting and boiling points, okay? Similarly, the metals, usually they have high densities, okay? Density, you know, mass by volume. So metals, they are usually having higher densities, right? The molecules are densely packed, okay? And they have a higher mass per volume ratio, right? So their mass is higher per unit volume. And non-metals are usually low density, okay? So please remember, again, there are some exceptions which are very important to remember. So guys, do you know exceptions of metals? So what are the exceptions to the high melting and boiling points? So guys, do you know that? Let's write it here. So can you tell me some uh, metals which have a low melting or boiling point? So come on, I want all of you to try here. Okay, so very good. Uh, I think Raja Ram Reddy says the correct answer. Sodium, potassium, right? Remember they're soft metals. They have a low melting and boiling point. Okay, does anybody know else? So there are some examples. There's even a metal called gallium, okay? So that is also an exception because gallium has a very low melting point, okay, uh, uh, right? So gallium uh, absorbs the heat and melts pretty easily at a low melting point. So sodium, potassium, gallium. And what are some exam exceptions of metals which are having low density, okay? So again, it's easy here. You can remember the soft metal guys, the guys with low tensile strength, it's sodium and potassium. So please remember these, this will really help you, okay? Uh, to, uh, because in the questions, they usually they ask these exceptions, right? Because there are few exceptions in chemistry and they'll usually be asked. And there are many of them, but you can learn the common ones. That's why I'm giving you the common ones here. And guys, what about uh, this thing, low melting and boiling point? Are there any exceptions here to this rule? Okay, so graphite, right? So graphite has a high melting and boiling point, okay? So graphite is a non-metal which has a high melting and boiling point. So it's an exception to the rule because usually non-metals have low melting and boiling point. And what about low density guys? Do you know a non-metal which has high density? So does anybody know? So these all you have to learn in chemistry. I know there's a bit of learning here, but uh, you must know that it's like an interesting quiz, right? Okay, so usually high density is iodine. Okay, so iodine has a high density and you can remember it's that guy which had a metallic shine. So it has a metallic shine and a high density. And of course, there are some more examples which you can read in your books. Excellent, guys. Another very important property, which I'm sure a lot of you know, right? Metals have a sonorous, right? What is the meaning of this word? Sonorous, who can tell me? And I've given you a hint. Can you see the picture of the bell here, right? The bells are made of metals, right? So what does this word sonorous mean? Come on, guys, I want all of you to try. Very good, produce sound, ringing sound, excellent. Abhinav says that, right? Right, so yeah, the it produces sound, but the better word to say is it has a ringing sound, okay? Because when you ring the bell, right, what is the sound? Tung, that kind of sound, right? You get the idea? Ting, the metallic, the ringing sound, okay? So yeah, that's called the, that means sonorous, to have that bell kind of sound, okay? Uh, so that's exactly, and non-metals, when you hit them, they are non-sonorous. It doesn't have a ringing sound, all right? Very good. So please remember, metals are sonorous, which means they have a ringing sound. Excellent. So those were the main 10 differences between metals and non-metals, and please remember the important exceptions. Guys, let's also talk about metalloids. Remember we said elements can be divided into metals, non-metals, 
metalloids and noble or inert gases. So what are these guys metalloids? These guys are basically in between metals and non-metals because we say those elements which show properties of metals, some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. So they are basically showing properties of both metals and non-metals. Okay. And guys, do you know any examples here? Right. So any examples of metalloids guys? So come on. I want people to try here. And the picture is there. Can you see that uh, uh, the, the computer chip, right? Very good. I see some examples uh, people are writing. So all of you try. So yeah, that's a picture of a CPU, right? A computer and uh, very good. Yeah, so silicon, right? Because you know silicon, these uh, silicon, they say, right? It's used as a semiconductor because it's neither a very good conductor nor a bad conductor. And silicon is used to make these chips, right? So silicon is used to make the chips that you see here, right? So computer industry is using silicon a lot to make the chips, right? So very good. And silicon, another example of metalloid is boron. Then you have germanium, okay? And there are a few more examples which you can learn. And they are used, silicon is the famous one which we call, it runs the semiconductor industry, right? Uh, because silicon is, these guys are semiconductors. Silicon, germanium, uh, because they are neither very good nor bad conductors. And as you can see from the definition, it shows properties of both metals and some properties of metals and non-metals. So it's in between. Okay. Yeah. And that's why we have Albert Einstein says Silicon Valley, right? You've heard of the term, right? So the Silicon Valley in US. So uh, in the, in the uh, United States of America, right? And it runs on this Silicon, right? Because the chips and the computer industry is running on Silicon. Excellent. Very good guys. Uh, and so here's a summary of what we learned today, right? Matter can be divided according to its chemical properties. Remember, there's not a physical property, solid liquid gas. We can divide matter into pure substance and mixtures. But our focus today was on pure substances and not only pure substances, right? We were focused on the elements in the pure substance. So let me highlight that in blue here. We were focused on the elements, right? not the compounds, the simplest substances in nature, which cannot be divided further. And under elements, you know, we can divide them into these four categories, metals, non-metals, which we talked about a lot. And we briefly touched upon metalloids, which are both properties of metals and non-metals. And today we didn't talk a lot about noble gases or inert gases like helium, argon, right? So neon, these are noble gases, which are very unreactive. Okay, so let's just to summarize, let's write an example of each, right? So here metals, we know iron, copper, okay? Non-metals is uh, carbon, sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, right? Metalloids, we looked at uh, silicon, germanium, boron, right? And noble gases, uh, what are the examples? Helium, neon, right? Argon. So, and note that these are all elements, not compounds. So guys, some of you thought water and uh, wood is a non-metal. It's not. Water is a compound. It's H2O made of hydrogen and oxygen, which are non-metals. Okay. So water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, which are non-metals, right? But water itself is not a, so let me add hydrogen also to the non-metal list here, right? But, and wood is a mixture. So wood falls under this category. Okay, guys. So our focus here was on, uh, elements and great to hear you guys like the class thanks a lot so do hit the like button and i have an interesting homework question for you so which metal do you think is the best conductor of electricity we talked about metals are very good conductors so who's the winner who's the best conductor of electricity is it gold silver aluminium or copper and do write your answer in the comments below i look forward to reading your answers and i promise to reply to them as soon as possible so very good. I see a lot of your writing answers here, but I won't tell you the right answer. You need to find that out and do write it in your comments below. I look forward to reading everyone's comments. And guys, as I said, do check out our website, manochaacademy.com. The best part is you can open it on a phone, a laptop, desktop, wherever. Uh, it works just like an app on any of these things. So manochaacademy.com. And I'm super excited to let you know that we've just launched the Math CBSE Class 10 full course. So guys, do check it out. We've got great discounts going on and we also have the physics and chemistry class 10 full courses. 
you'll get to uh, see more interactive videos here. You'll get to attend more live classes. There are quizzes and questions. So we really want to help everyone in their preparation. So guys, do check out these courses. I'll put the links below. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on these live classes that we are having. And also guys, check out our live classes and videos on our website. And uh, please do hit the notification bell and uh, hit the subscribe button. And guys, do share it out with your friends. So please share it on WhatsApp, Facebook, right on your Instagram and do share it out so that we can have more people joining the Manocha Academy family. So I really want to say a big thanks because it's awesome to read everybody's comments. So thank you guys. Thanks for hitting the like button. So here's Sandeep Panocha signing off. I hope you had a nice uh, live session today and uh, see you in the next one. We usually have this live sessions at 8 p.m., right? So the notification will uh, go out to you. So guys, I really uh, hope you enjoyed the session and uh, do uh, check out our uh, next notification. And guys, do let me know this answer, right? Which is the best conductor of electricity. So awesome to have all of you interacting and writing out answers. I really enjoyed this class. I hope you did too. So let me know your answers in the comments below and do check out our website. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Do take care of your health. And I just pray that everyone is safe and fine and do keep learning and having fun. All right, guys, here I'm signing off. Take care, bye-bye.